What's up, everybody? My name is Jared Hartman, and welcome to my very first episode of my poker vlog. I've been very excited to do this. I've been inspired by people such as Brad Owen, Andrew Nimi, Mariano, Rampage, Wolf Game Poker, just to name a few. Those are some of my favorites. So definitely go check them out. As for poker, my career has been relatively short. I've been studying and playing for three years now. One of my my biggest achievement so far is I actually won my first ever live poker tournament. And as you can all see, I am currently residing in my parents' basement here in St. Louis. So most of my footage right now will come from the Hollywood Casino here and the Amerisar Casino here in St. Louis. But my goal is to travel around and go to as many places as possible, such as this vlog will be coming to you from Austin, Texas. I recently went to visit my buddy Justin to go see the nationally renowned Texas Card House and Shuffle 512, a more local place that uh, is a fan favorite for the locals. I finally, I do work a full-time job. I am a loan officer with Gershwin Mortgage, so if you know anybody in the game looking to get a loan, then let me know. I'd be happy to help them. Besides that, it has been snowing here. We have had a few storms, and it looks like it's been all across America. We got like six or seven inches here, but it has finally given me some time to actually get this thing started, get this vlog started, which I've been doing, wanting to do for a while. And it's also given me the opportunity to do a, more, a few fun things, such as this. As a heads up, this was at midnight, and I wasn't harming anyone. There wasn't anybody out, so I wasn't putting anyone in danger by doing this. Plus, I had been trained by a professional stunt car driver. His name is Scotty, and he actually likes to go on adventures and make videos of him traveling and whatnot. His YouTube is Scotty Joseph, and I have the link in the description below. Besides that, let's get to Texas. Let's get into some hands. Uh, my goal for the vlog and going future, going to the future is to be actually able to record the hands and actually give you footage of the casino, which I did not plan on doing this, and so I don't have the footage, but just figured I'd go over a couple hands and introduce myself this video and then go on from there. So without further ado, here are some hands. So up to this point, we have, this is day three. We've gone to Shuffle 512 on day one, Texas Card House on day two. And we are at Shuffle 512 for day three, and that is because they had a 1-3 match your stack game going on. It's the biggest game I've ever played. I was into the game for $900, and a few different reasons I settled on that amount, but I won't need to get any into any of those. Let's get into the hands. The first hand was crazy. I was dealt pocket queens on the very first hand I was dealt in. And I didn't exactly know what to rate, what size to raise to. There was a straddle and under the gun, and I was in under the gun plus one. And so I went to $40 with my pocket queens, and the immediate disrespect is I got five callers. Out of the nine people at the table, five others besides me wanted to play the hand. So we're going to take a flop with $240 in the pot, and that flop is king, nine, deuce, rainbow, it checks to me, and I'm going to put in the check this time. There's an overcard to my queens with six other players. There's a very small chance I'm good here, unfortunately, uh, which we could have isolated, Might maybe should have gone bigger pre-flop. But the player to the left of me raises, makes a bet himself for $125, and it folds around to me now. And like I said, I'm going to make the fold here. I don't think we're going to be good too often with this many people. And he actually shows pocket deuces. So we were we were way behind. Not behind a king, which is what I was expecting. But nonetheless, we were behind. For the second hand, I get dealt ace-queen off suit. I am in under the gun plus two this time. I am going to raise it up to $30 this is not a straddle pot. This is just a straight up 10x raise. This game has been playing really big. It's actually been pretty insane. So as you can tell, I get two callers, which it, for a 10x raise is big. Uh, 
the flop comes queen three three rainbow. I'm gonna see bet this one. We get one fold, and the big blind who made the call pre-flop is going to call my C bet of forty-five dollars, which is half pot into the ninety. So, interesting things developing. Uh, the river or the turn is a five, and I'm going to. He checks it to me. I'm gonna check it through this time. I don't really know what I'm getting value from. This player in particular is pretty actiony. He has been making a bunch of calls, making a bunch of raises. He's been playing a lot of hands. So I'm just going to put in the check knowing that he's a lot more likely to have the threes in this situation. I do have top pair, but he has a lot of combinations of threes and of threes that beat me. So I'm a little concerned, not too concerned when he puts in the check on the blank of a river. It is a nine. But he puts in the check, and he kind of gives off a little a little vibe that I'm not exactly loving at this point. And he didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He's just kind of, he sat up in his seat in a way that, you know, I don't like going off live tells too much. But uh, we're going we're gonna to check this one back because I don't really know what I'm getting value from. That's really worse. Maybe a nine that floated the flop. A nine would definitely check back the turn and the river. But so, but besides those, there's not many. I think he just folds hands such as ace-jack, ace-king, if he has an ace-king without raising me. And maybe a worse queen also I can get value from. But the check works out this time because I show my hand and he immediately says no good and shows queen three for the flopped full house. So that's a bullet there. Definitely lost the minimum. He was... Like he said, he was really anxious to put in the check raise on the on the river there, so I really dodged the bullet there, really avoided a tough decision with that check back. All right, and the next few hands here are against a very actionable player. He's a reg at Shuffle 512, and he's a very, very fun guy. He was great to play with. And we look down at Ace-King in the button, Ace-King offsuit, and I'm going to raise up this straddled pot to $40, he is on the big blind. He's going to make the call. The straddler is going to get out of the way. So there is $90 in the pot. The flop comes queen, 10, deuce with two clubs. I have the ace of clubs. And so I'm going to, he's checking it over to me, and I'm going to put in the C-bet of $45. He's going to go ahead and make the call. Turn is a blank. Turn is a seven of hearts. And I'm going to fire again. I have two over cards and a gut shot straight draw. Decent hand to semi-bluff with and continue betting with. I'm going to increase the size to $100 on this bet. And he's going to make the call once again. And then the river is a blank. It is the nine of diamonds. It feels like a blank. Complete some straights. I don't think he's going to have a straight if he's been peeling so far, I feel like he's more likely to have hands like a king, a 10, or a, or a queen, a 10, or a 9. So we're going to try to get him off that hand. Probably not a good player in looking back to try to bluff off a hand. I'm going to bet 175. And he is going to make the call and show queen 5 of spades. So top pair, relatively weak kicker, but he's going to make the call and win the pot. So good hand, sir. So this very next hand is against the same player. There is a straddle on once again. I am in the cutoff. He is in the small blind this time. It folds to me, and I'm going to raise to $50 this time instead of 40 He is going to make the call on the under-the-gun straddler gets out of the way. With $110 in the pot, the flop comes pretty favorably. It comes ace-nine-deuce rainbow. We are going to go ahead and put in a bet to $75 once he checks it over to me. And... This time around, he is going to raise me. He raises to 250 and I have 550 behind me at this point. Been a little bit behind this session. Didn't quite decide to reload quite yet. Was going to if I, after a few hands, depending on how they went. But I really think about what he has, the kind of player he's been, and ultimately I decide to go ahead and chip it. I put the $550 effective into the pot, and he goes ahead and makes a call, and there it is a safe run out, and we show ace-king, and he flips over ace-jack and says you're good, and we're going to scoop an $1,100 pot. So 
that one is the biggest pot I've ever won. That feels really good. That is was a super exciting hand. Uh, and that's just kind of the action you're going to get here in Texas, here in some of these bigger pots that you won't quite see in the St. Louis game. But it doesn't mean the St. Louis game is not big, not beatable. So the next hand we are going to get into is again once again against this player i this time it is a double board bomb pot so everybody puts in ten dollars blind pre-flop which means there's a total of ninety dollars going into the pot and there's two boards which means the flop comes three cards on two different boards and to win the entire pot you have to get everyone else to fold or you have to win both boards and so if you win just one one of the boards, you get half the pot. And if, say, you're against one opponent and he gets the other half or the other board, he's going to get the other half of the pot. In this hand, that is not the case as we're going to take it all. We look down at ace-queen and the top flop comes ace-9-7 and the bottom flop comes 8-5-6. And so they are pretty connected. I want to bet pretty big to get people out of the pot. I'm going to bet... I'm going to bet $70 here, and just the player, the action player we have been going to battle with all night is going to make the call. And the turn, our two blanks, does not improve my hand, and which is why I'm going to put in the check. He's going to put in the check back, and we are going to a river, and the river is a jack, so that's a little bit scary for the bottom hand. But, or for the bottom board, but I'm going to put out a bet still. I'm going to try to get him off the pot. I'm going to size up here, up, size up here to $150, and he's going to make the call, and we are actually going to stack him because he has a seven. So he flopped top pair, marginal kicker on the first board. My ace, my ace queen will be better than him on that board, and he flopped an open-ended straight draw with the eight, five, six on the bottom board but he did not improve. And so we are going and going to take that one in. And let's get on to the next hand. And the final hand of the night here is another ace queen. This was actually back to back with that double board bomb pot hand. I am going to be in the under the gun position and he, my opponent in this hand is going to be on the cutoff. There is an under the gun straddle. Sorry, excuse me. I am under the gun plus one here, not under the gun. And there's an under gun straddle. And when I look down at ace queen, I'm going to raise it up to $50. My opponent on the cutoff is going to make the call. And we are going to see a flop heads up. And the flop with $110 in the pot is a good one. It's queen seven four, two spades. I do not have a spade in my hand. And we are going to bet, we are going to see bet since it is a little bit connected, there are two spades. We're going to put in a bigger bet here to $90 and he's going to make the call. So we're going to see a turn, which is a brick. It is a three, a three of clubs to be specific. And once again, we're going to put in a bet here. I think I can get value from worse hands from him and surely, excuse me, surely enough, he is going to make the call of $125. And then the turn, the, excuse me, the river is an offsuit jack. The spade draw does not get there. Our queen high is, or our ace, ace queen is still a very good hand, very premium hand here. So we're going to size down. We're going to size to this, a rebet of $125. And he's going to make the call and show us third pair or four, flopped third pair he shows us 10-4 suited so interesting hand but we're going to take this one down and scoop up our final pot of the night it is about 345 at this point and we got a flight to catch at 10 a.m the next the current morning so Justin and i are going to head out and we're going to get ready to head back here to st louis so all things said and done I am going to cash out for thirteen ninety this night, and I brought in nine hundred, so that is a profit of 
$490, which is a very good session. My very first shot take to a much bigger game than a normal one two I, I'm used to playing. And so the next thing I wanted to talk about is the direction I'm trying to take this vlog. I'm trying to get live footage so that it's not just me talking into a camera every time. And I also am going to try to get into bigger games. I'm going to start taking shots into the two, three games here in St. Louis. Those are the biggest games we've been seeing in St. Louis as of late due to COVID and everything going on. And that's where I want to go. So if you enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe. And uh, I'm happy to hear any feedback, whether it's someone shouting at me in the comments or if you got some constructive, uh, constructive advice for the hands I played. I'd love to hear that as well. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.